the, uh, the way that I was introduced to Birdland was uh, gradually, uh, of course, with my father and the love of music he had. Uh, the Duke it was a very popular with the big bands. Uh, in Europe, that was big. So the Duke Ellington, uh, you know, the Count Basie orchestras, you know, Benny Goodman's, these were things that my father listened to and loved. Uh, we did know about Birdland. My father, unfortunately, did not speak English. So he was, you know, he was at home listening to records and playing, uh, and he wasn't able to really get out and enjoy the live scene. But I always heard from him about all these great artists that played on 52nd Street in Manhattan. So I was aware of it. But then again, at that time, I didn't, I didn't really, when I came to New York, Birdland had closed in 1965. I came to New York in 1969, 70. So for me, uh, it wasn't something that I had visited. Although over the last 30 years that I've owned Birdland, uh, the people that I've met, not only the artists, but those that attended shows there, the, the fans, the guests, uh, the experiences uh, that they had there, uh, the memories that they had at Birdland. I love sitting with them and sharing them because unfortunately I wasn't there at the original. Uh, now it's no longer a jazz club, it's another operation. Uh, and I walk by it a lot of times. And there's still this draw to it, this mystique. Let's go downstairs and see if Pee Wee's there or see if Dizzy's there or Charlie or somebody. So it was great. But my progression came uh, after graduating at NYU. I worked, I worked as I went to school. And I worked in the service industry and the restaurant industry. And I found that um, the best way for students to uh, pay their way was to work because you could do hours, uh, you could alternate a lot of the times. I started out working in a kitchen in a restaurant, and then I'd graduate to the waiter's position, and then from there, a bartender's position, and then I became a host and a manager during the years. I, uh, I fell in love with the industry. I, I know uh, my graduate work was in art education. Uh, my mother would have been just over the top to know that I was a teacher and had that, and she would look at me sometimes and I'd be at bartending and she would go, what went wrong with this one? Uh, so I, uh, I found that to be very intriguing. I love engaging with people. I love the service industry. So I was very fortunate and I opened up a restaurant. And I opened my first restaurant in 1977 on the east side. I later expanded to the west side. And um, one day I was I, I had gotten to know Charlie Smalls, who introduced me to Hugh Masekela, great trumpet player from South Africa. Charlie Smalls had written the music for Miracles on Broadway. He lived in a building close to where my opened. So we became good friends and didn't know much about Charlie, but I respected the fact that he had written a show on Broadway and Hugh Masekela, South African, he actually would tell me stories of when he roomed with Miles Davis. And then the big popular names were things that I was familiar with. The, the, uh, the names that weren't in the media all the time were names that I did not know with the Sidemen. But of course, you knew the Ella Fitzgeralds, the Sarah Vaughns, and these things that my father always spoke about. And I never work on a Saturday afternoon. And I went in on a Saturday afternoon, and uh, you and Charlie were sitting having a cocktail and brunch. And a woman walked in at the front door. And Charlie turned to me and said, that's Doris Parker. Now, I really didn't know. I mean, I have heard of Charlie Parker. So I went over. I introduced myself. I asked her if she was having brunch. And I brought her over to a table. We sat. We chatted. And she started to become a regular customer. She would come in. At that time, this was in 1983, 84. In 1984, I was building another place on the Upper West Side on 105th and Broadway. And one day she walked in during the construction days. 
people are working and this and she walks in and she's walking around and hi Doris how's everything great she goes this reminds me of the old Birdland and I had never been and I go really she says this was where the peanut gallery was the stage was here this that. we should open up Charlie's bandstand and this is how she referred to it let's open up Charlie's bandstand we need to do this and I go not a jazz man. I mean, I know jazz artists, but to run a jazz club, to book contracts, all those things that go together to make it work, I really didn't have the know-how. She, very persistent. She would come down to the restaurant. We really need to open up Charlie's Bandstand. You don't need another restaurant. You have one on the east side. You have one on the west side. What do you need another restaurant for? We need to open up Charlie's Bandstand. I loved her, and she was wonderful. And we shared a lot. I said to her, I said, uh, I don't really know the inner workings of a jazz club. She says, don't worry. I'll be here to help you. I have many friends. She set up an appointment for me the following week. I'll always remember this. And a gentleman came in, very well dressed. And I said, well, come between 4 and 6, because we'd break down for lunch. There would be a time period where I could sit down and be able to have conversation without having to get up and down. Someone's here, this is happening, this is happening. The general Max sat down, we talked, and I always remember this. As he was eating, he, he went like this. He says, you know, if we're going to do this, you got to do it right. And he says, uh, but you got a lot of help, so we can make this work. So he leaves, and uh, he leaves, and Doris is sitting there, and I go, Doris, uh, First of all, who's Max? He goes, that's Max Roach. And I go, Max Roach? So, I mean, I know Charlie, that was Charlie's drummer. And I go, wow. So I go home. And by this time, when she's getting on me about opening, I'm reading everything I can get my hands on. And this is like prior, you know, you can get on your iPhone and go, who did this? Who did that? And it's right here. I'm going out. I'm getting books. Whatever I can get, Max Roach. I'm going, oh, my God, that Max Roach I had dinner with Max Roach. He's telling me he's going to help me. Following weeks, he, he comes back with Doris, with Bill Cosby. Ooh, they were very close friends. And they go, this is a great idea. We got to open up this bandstand. It, we need it. Bah, 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 bah. It goes on and on. So I do. With the grace of God, I have Max. I have Doris. And Bill on the side, because we did a lot of fundraisers and openings that made things uh, Doris was very involved with Veritas uh, to help the children and all, and we would raise money and do things. So uh, Max would play, and then Cosby would get on the drums and play, and people would be lying down the streets. Um, ironically, when I opened there, uh, I had taken over six little stores in a condo building. I renovated it. I literally dug out the basement to have basement space, and I put a lot of time, sweat, and money into this location. But I was having a problem with the co-op board above me uh, with sound issues. Every now and then you'd get a call, uh, you know, if there's somebody hitting the drums, Ben Riley's hitting the drums, or this is hitting. So I had to address those issues. So now we go from Birdland 52nd Street, opens in 1949, closes in 65. And Johnny, with the help of amazing people, especially Doris Parker, God rest her soul. We opened in 1985. And here I am catching up on the world of jazz because I've missed 50 years. And I'm determined, as most people do know me, to, to be able to get this right. And I begin to not only uh, learn about the music, but I learn about the artists themselves, uh, the, the wonderful people that I was getting to uh, become friends with, to become partners with, uh, to, uh, to share their lives, not only artistically, but personally. And as many of us know, the old time jazz artists are the most giving and loving people that I'd ever, and not, not just the old times, I'm talking back when I'm talking 30 years ago, Harry Sweets Edison and Al Gray and Clark Terry and Oscar Peterson and Hank Jones and Tony Williams, 
I'm getting my education, but I'm having it really shoved at me in a, in a, in a very short period of time. And I'm growing, and I realize, being a restaurant person, that I've created something different on 105th and Broadway. What I did is I took a restaurant and I dropped the jazz club in the middle of it, which for years we've all been conditioned and probably we've been programmed to think that when you go to a jazz club, you don't eat. You have a cocktail. Like George Coleman used to say to me, jazz club is a brandy, a cigar, and music. And I'm going, well, yeah, well, what about the appetizer, the entree, the dessert, and maybe an after-dinner drink, and forget about the cigar, because we don't like smoke. So here I am, not only am I challenged as a new person in the scene, and there's Max down at the Vanguard that I meet, Lorraine. There are, uh, you know, there are others that are on the scene that have been around a long time, and you know, Art DeLugoff and people that have been there. And here's a new kid out of NYU, restaurant person, with a name, iconic name, Birdland. So I go through this learning stage, and sometimes when God closes the door, he opens a window. And I really feel this was it. And Doris was very, very helpful. Uh, guys would tell me, uh, introduce me, uh, here, you got to book this gentleman. Who's this? This is Milt Jackson. Hello, Milt. You want to do New Year's? This is the kind of help I had that without them, truthfully, I don't know if the name, again, we're talking about the name. We're trying to survive an iconic name with the history. Uh, it's not about Johnny Valenti because no one knows Johnny Valenti. But we know about Berkeley, and it was opened during a time where jazz was at its peak. Unfortunately, when Charlie left, Morris Levy just decided to just abandon it. Thank God Doris Parker, the love that she had for the music and for Charlie, was there to make it carry on. So as we go through this, I'm fighting my way through restaurant, jazz club, learning about the music, learning about the artists, learning about putting the business together. But one thing that I found that was important was I needed to reach more people. Everyone that knew about Birdland and what kept jazz alive in the 60s and the 70s, when basically, if you think about history, we turned our back on our own music and our artists had to go to Europe and Asia to survive. You Johnny Hartman and guys, great artists, before, couldn't get work. And thank God for the, for, for the other shores outside abroad that helped us. So I needed to make a move. But I was locked into a lease uptown for 10 years. So I knew in my heart that Birdland needed to be back where it originally was. So at the last year of my lease, I frantically just went all over the city looking for a space. And ironically, one day I was in Midtown and I was parked in a parking lot. And across, as I'm pulling out of the parking lot, I see this possible great place. And I walk in, it was in the middle of building. They were putting it together as a restaurant. It wasn't a restaurant. And there was a gentleman at the bar. His hand is like plastered to his head. He's just like, oh. And I go, can I speak to the owner? And he goes, I'm the owner. And I'd like to talk to you about it. I said, I'd love to have this space. And the guy goes, yeah, 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 yeah. He gives me this, that. I leave my card. And about a week later, a gentleman drives up to one of my restaurants on the west side. And he says, you were in to see my place. And my manager told me, he said, well, I thought he was the owner. He goes, no, he's just the manager. He goes, are you interested in the place? He says, I'm in the middle of building this. And I have a lot of partners, and it's not working. And I said, stop building. Don't do anything, because I wanted to create my own space. And we hammered out a deal. And at the end of my lease, I went downtown in 1995. And I started building, and I opened on November 1, 1995. And uh, this is the circle that I think of, uh, that I love to think about, is going from Broadway and 52nd to 105th and Broadway, and getting my feet wet, and learning, 
and going through a process of not only learning but just finding out how much I love the music and how much I love the artist and how much I love the royalty the, to see the, the people that would come and support these artists. It wasn't like any other genre. I mean, yeah, you have it in opera, but what, what I was part of was to see that if you put Ron Carter here or if you put him two stores down, these people followed him. And what I realized was that I had a special situation. I had people that not only came to see the artist, there were people that may not be that aware of the artist, but they came to Birdland because of the history. So here we go, and we're in Midtown, and I have parking, I have a subway on the corner, I have Times Square, and I have a lot of tourists that have known all these artists from whether they're in Japan South America, Canada, Australia, and Europe coming to visit us. And it just made my life easier, but so much more enjoyable that I could book Joe Lovano and know that I was going to get a night where it was going to be full and people are going to leave. Not only are they going to leave uh, seeing one of their favorite artists, they're going to come in and have a great time. They're going to have dinner and they're gonna have a full night. And what was important for me was taking this space is my 10 years of apprenticeship, and this is what I call it, was very important for me. Because not being a jazz player became more of a blues and rock uh, artist with an electric Fender bass. Uh, the, the people that we started booking where we, were, where we were going with the music made it so much more enjoyable. And I started to grow with them and grow with not only uh, in business, but the love for their music and their artistry. So we were very fortunate. I remember opening, uh, Pat Metheny came in and did an opening with me with an amazing group Pat was a dear friend that I had met up there, d didn't play, but once we were in Midtown, Pat brought in Michael Brecker, Jack DeJanet, uh, Dave Holland, Joey Colorado, and himself, Quintet. And I saw lines go down 8th Avenue and police on horses, keeping people on the sidewalks. And I realized that this is where I belong. And uh, I've I've been in now the owner of Birdland for 30 years, and last November I signed a 20-year extension. So we are hopefully, I'm trying to live my promise to Doris and Max, because my last meeting with them when I agreed to open was I can only do this for 50 years. So I've got 50, 20, I make it to the 50th year. and. That's my circle. Okay, let's do it. Okay, you ready? Johnny Valenti. <laughs>